It's a pretty wild brew day today. I'm going to try to brew two batches. I'm doing a five gallon Russian Imperial Stout and I'm doing a 10 gallon IPA. So I'm, uh, I'm actually kind of going old school with my setup today. Uh, for the five gallon batch, my system is a 10 gallon system and it really doesn't work well for five gallon batches, but our brew club has been doing a, we're doing a project. We're all brewing the same recipe and then we are going to uh, uh, blend them and put them into a bourbon barrel. So we have uh, a number of bourbon barrels, I, I guess we're going to choose the ones that are suitable for blending and then uh, we're going to have these in the bourbon barrel and then they're going to be uh, bottled and we are going to send those off to national homebrew uh, team competition or something like that so uh, we're all brewing the same recipe of course there's a, a lot of variables that can can happen in the uh, in the ingredients a lot can happen in the water chemistry. Um, also, they gave us two options for yeast. And then you're supposed to, uh, you know, do it in primary uh, and then move it over to a keg and then they're going to be sampled prior to carbonation. And then those that are deemed worthy will be put into the bourbon barrel. And also, we're doing this in combination with a, a little nano brewery that is in um, my neighborhood here called uh, Oso and if you saw my previous video I showed you a little bit about Oso they're now uh, brewing their own beer and uh, the guys that are selected will be able to uh, brew a batch with the brewmaster I guess so um, that'll be fun I'm hoping uh, I'm selected uh, I've never brewed a Russian Imperial Stout before so this will be uh, a new new thing for me but my system for today is um, my kind of my old setup is the I use my my mash ton from my uh, five gallon setup and uh, I'm just letting that sit in the sun and warm it up I'm using my old uh, brew kettle there uh, just gonna use that as my HLT and then I have you know my my kind of my my version of uh, Brutus 10 uh, with the Blickman kettles and you've seen that in previous setups so here's uh, my my Blickman uh, setup uh, brew stand so we'll see how this goes uh, I'm heating up the water now for uh, for the batch sparging uh, and uh, gonna mash in um, around uh, let's see what's it say mash in uh, at 166.9 and uh, starting out with 7.11 gallons of water and I'm gonna mash uh, for I probably will mash for longer than 45 um, I'll probably go an hour on that uh, at 156 um, it's warm enough so that I shouldn't have too much trouble maintaining uh, that mash temperature. It's finally nice enough where I can brew. Temperature today, uh, you can see it, it's uh, uh, approaching 80 here. And uh, it'll probably be a little over 80 today, I'm guessing. Maybe 87, but that's not bad here. So uh, there's the grains. Uh, milled um, recipe I'm using um, and I took kind of a conservative uh, brew house efficiency of only 68 percent uh, or uh, yeah 68 percent and then um, I'm going to uh, brew a little more than five um, and then I'm going to um, so my, my my grain bill might be larger than a lot of the guys because I've got uh, 15.3 ounces of uh, pale malt, uh, pound uh, and 4.7 ounces of caramel, um, 
pound of oats, 14 ounces of chocolate, 13 ounces of roasted, uh, 8.4 ounces of victory, and 6.6 um, .6 ounces of carafa special. So, um, hoping to hit uh, a little lower on the uh, on the gravity. Um, I think we're trying to hit around yeah uh, 1.084 starting gravity. It's a little lower than you'd expect on a Russian Imperial. They wanted us to have the sort of the bitterness on the lower end and the alcohol. Um, you know, the ABV um, sort of more in the middle uh, to lower end um, for the blending. So that's what I'm doing today. Um, hopefully I'll get these two brews done. I'm for sure going to get this one done. And uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, see how motivated I am if I can get the, the IPA. I figure since I have everything out here, I might as well just keep going and, and brew. So that's what I'm doing. And uh, I'll give you some updates as we go along. It's a beautiful day. I want to make sure I get all the grains mixed up in this big of a batch and so many grains and, and it's kind of deep so it's you want to just make sure you get all of them down there make sure you got them all unclumped you don't want any balls it really ruins your efficiency if you don't get it all mixed up And uh, just want to make sure since this is going to be judged by others I want to make sure it's very good I want to make sure I do everything correctly well, it's looking nice Got nice color already. I've made some of my best beer using batch sparge, and uh, I really only made two batches of beer on my brew stand, so kind of brings back some fond memories of how I used to brew my beer up in the mountains, up in the White Mountains of Arizona. I had good success. It looks like I'm right on my target temperature too, so I think that's going to be, right there is going to be where I'm going to have to stop. This is the first runnings of the Russian Imperial Stout. Doing a Vorlov. 
nice and slow. Look at the color. It's really dark. Beautiful. One more. How about enjoying the fruits of your labor? A little hot scotchy. Oh, oh, that's good. That is the fruits of your labor on a brew day. Okay, I have my Imperial Stout. And that is in the boil. I've had my first hop edition. Give you a peek in there. And that is multi chocolate dark roasted goodness. And right now I'm working on my IPA and I'm mashing the grains right now, recirculating. And I'm doing a step mash on this. Probably could have done a batch, but I like to recirculate and uh, really hit the targets.